Hi there, YouTubers and modelers alike. Old Man Tech here. I've been kind of on a modeling roll lately. A little distraction from the videos I used to do quite a bit of. But I've gotten into it, so I'm going to do a few of them. The reason I'm doing it is because I actually had some of these vehicles back in the day. And I thought, well, it'd be nice if I can have a uh, physical representation by building some models of what the cars I used to have. Now, in my last video, you noticed I had a 1968 Chevelle SS that I did, which is this one right here. Pretty much what I had in 74. And 73, 1973, prior to that car, I did have this 66 Chevelle SS. And it was uh, regal red. As you can see, I've got the body started on it now, on the paint. The rest of the parts look really good. There's hardly any overflash and all that stuff. Now, I had a very hard time finding this model. I could not find any new uh, reproductions on it. This one I happened to come across on eBay. It was an open box that this guy had, but the parts and everything are still here. So I went ahead and got it. I figured if I didn't get it, I probably wouldn't have a very good chance of getting one in the future. So anyway, I got one and we're going to go ahead and and build this model and see how it comes out. Uh, I think the instructions had a date on of around 1998. So it's a pretty old model. The only bad thing I've seen about it so far is, of course, age has taken its toll on this decal sheet. As you can see the uh, license plates are pretty well gone. Hopefully I can salvage this uh, dash instrument. I might just cut it out and glue it in place instead of trying to risk moving it with water. I don't think that's going to come out too good if I try and soften these things up and try and transfer them. So anyway here's where I'm at at this stage and uh, we'll keep you updated as we move along. All right, here we are at phase two. As you can see, I've got the interior parts painted. Uh, the body is regal red, like the car came out with. And I used that same color on the dash cover. On the rest of the interior parts, I used uh, apple red, kind of give it a little contrast with the outside and lighten it up a little bit. Uh, the bottom chassis got the inside painted for the carpet and so forth looking and the bottom of the chassis I did what I did on my 68 and I lifted up or if you look at it this way I actually lowered the rear end a little bit about an eighth of an inch to give that a little bit of a, a rake look to it and I've got some other parts here uh, with the primer on it, engine compartment, so forth, firewall, radiator. Got the primer on them. The engine is pretty much painted the Chevy red. I pre-drilled the holes for the uh, spark plug boots, so that'll come in later. By the way, if you would happen to use a hot air gun like I did to uh, warm up the parts a little bit before you paint them. Be careful not to do that with the steering wheel. As you can see, uh, I can't use a steering wheel. <laughs> but I do have another one that they sent. I wished I could have used that other one, darn it, but I guess I'll have to use this one here. So, a word to the wise. Watch what you're heating up and how close you're getting. The engine bay is now painted, as you can see nice glossy black color. The interior is put together. The engine's been detailed. If you can see in this light, but got the spark plug wires ran. Radiator, hose, generator, power steering reservoir. I've yet to uh, run the brake lines and the gas lines. So I'm not going to put the steering wheel on yet. I've learned from experience to don't put that steering wheel on because when you're 
move it around and turn it upside down you're going to damage that or you're going to have to block up the body so this is just sitting loose right now I can actually take this out I'm going to wait until I'm ready to put the body on before I put that in there um, if you recall this uh, decal sheet I got was pretty much destroyed from the age uh, the gauges that you can see in there I started to cut them out and because these decals are so aged and brittle I actually actually started falling apart so what I did this might be a tip to somebody is I took that stuff that's called liquid skin basically kind of like fingernail polish I guess and I rubbed that over the decal let it dry a little bit and then I was able to cut it out without without it disintegrating on me so I got that in there. I, on, on the paper that's the backing of this, I also kind of painted the outside edges that black so you wouldn't see that white paper. So I think that come out pretty good. So that might be a tip to somebody who uh, wants to maybe salvage an old decal and get it to work for you. Okay, I've got the body painted out. As you can see, I've got my chrome trim all done on it. Um, I used the spray can on it which I love how it goes on nice and thick but even if you start spraying and go past occasionally you get little bumps little bitty uh, dimples of paint so I uh, went through some sandpaper I started out with about 3200 and went up to 8000 and got most of that out of it there's still a few spots that I couldn't get to, but I'm going to leave them. And then I took some of this uh, turtle polishing compound and a Dremel and a polishing cloth and pretty much took care of at least the top and the trunk and some of it on the sides. So I think it turned out pretty good that way. It's the first time I've tried that. And we've got the, the wheels put together use some of this Tamiya panel line accent color did the inside of those the chassis and the interior is pretty much done I've uh, ran the gas line from the tank up to the carburetor and I've got the brake lines coming up and going into the master cylinder so we pretty much got her detailed out now so I guess the next step would be to put on the wheels and then get the body slipped over it and we'll see how she comes out after that okay I'm just gonna take a moment here and vent about the different uh, finishing methods to use and things I've been trying to learn as I go along here and uh, one of them was using that pledge or future or whatever you call floor finish now on this model I used an acrylic and I probably didn't put it on as thick as I could have but I noticed in the process of building the model that on these sharp edges you know if you handle them too much then the paint started to come off so then I'd be touching that up and I finally got the whole car to where it was pretty much even and it didn't look too bad and the reason I brought this model back out to put that uh, pledge on it was I thought well that bring a little shine out with it which it does it does put a nice sheen on it but I tried the brush method and when I put it on it's going to be places where it looks like you put it on with the brush when it dries and then any subsequent coat that you would put on after that is just going to build on top of the mistake that you've already got now using that pledge is probably fine if you're going to put it in your case and put it up on the shelf and think oh that looks good on well, my models I'm thinking uh, when I'm dead and gone my kids or somebody's going to be handling these models and looking at them and I want it to be the best job that I can possibly do to it 
And of course, that's probably going to be a disaster too, because as soon as they pick it up, they'll pick it up wrong and knock off the rear view mirrors and who knows what else will happen. But uh, the point is, I want them to look their best. And I know my models are never going to be show quality, but I want to be happy that when I pick it up and look at it, I see something I'm proud of. Not only the brush marks there, but uh, apparently some came down the side window here and there's runs you can see. Uh, so then, uh, oh man, you know, before the, the model finish was, you know, it wasn't as, as bright, but it was even and it was not too bad looking. But I did want to put that protective coat on it, so I went with the pledge route. And then, of course, I tried to sand it all down, and it, you, you sand as much as you want, but when you get down to that first coat that is the one that screwed up to begin with, you can't go any deeper. You're going to be into your finish, so then you just got to stop and let it go the way it was. Now, I tried that on the trunk, too. Of course, then you got your sharp edges here, and I started to go through the finish, the pledge, and the paint, so then I had to touch that up again. So it's just one big pain in the ass do it that way. Now on this model here, I used enamel and I put it on two fairly thick coats. Of course, then you're going to have your your orange peel and little nipples, like there's a nipple right here that you can see. I didn't dare try and sand that down, otherwise I'd have probably took some paint off on the sharper edges. But as you can see overall on the trunk, and on the top, there's no brush marks, there's no this or that, to, you know. So on this one, I did sand it down, like I told you before, on the trunk and this. And I think I'm just going to use some auto polish, some car polish, and bring the shine out of it. It's got kind of a nice little sheen to it already, by golly. But for those that are wondering which way to go, uh, Think very carefully on what you use for a top finish, even if it's spray on clear enamel, because you're going to have, you know, nipples and stuff with that too, you got to deal with. So I think if you got a finish that turned out this good, just leave it alone, polish it with car polish, and have something you're proud of. You know, like I say before, to each their own. Build your model the way you want to build it, and the end result, when you pick them up and look at them, are you going to be happy with them? That's what you need to ask yourself and then proceed from there. So anyway, I vented. We'll move on with the build. We made it to the finish line. Got her all done. See that uh, back in there, swinging around. Get you the lower view of it here. Oh, I wish I had an automatic turntable. <laughs> oh well. That's not the important part. The important part's building, ain't it? Okay, let's see if we can get a upper view on it. Okay, here we are a little higher up. I really like the way it turned out my first time doing this process of actually putting enough coats of enamel on there to where you can be able to sand out the uh, orange peel and most of the imperfections anyway and get a fairly nice looking finish on it. Uh, to each their own, but like I say, you know, some of them models you look at up close and it looks like they painted over sand, you know, I just, it's just not my bag. So, you know, this ain't no perfect model, it ain't no Ain't no show model, there's no doubt about it, but it's a model that I'm happy of and I'm proud of. And uh, that's what this is all about. So let's see what the, it looks like with the engine compartment. There you go. There's the engine compartment. All detailed out. And that concludes another build. Thanks for watching.